<laughs> What's going on, good people? We're a little early, we're a little early, so we're gonna give y'all a few minutes to come and get in the room, get in the room. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Good Saturday, good Saturday. Hope you guys are doing really well. Um, thank you so much for joining me um, again on another Conversations with Carrie Too Smooth. I, I just think it's a beautiful thing that you guys want to take time out on Saturdays to say what's up. So, what's up, what's up? Morning, morning. Where's everybody from? Tell me where everybody's from. I'm trying to give everybody a shout out. You know what I'm saying? Where's everybody from? I saw we had Callie in the building. We had Kelly in the building. What's up? Where's everybody from? Y'all do a little roll call real quick. I'm from such and such. I'm from such and such. Virginia in the house. Chicago in the house. That's what's up. What's up? Bama in the house. Colorado, Jersey, Maine. Oh, the UK, Japan. What's up? Yo, I'm super hyped. Yo, that's super hyped. Y'all got me hyped this morning. Brooklyn in the house. What's up? Arkansas, Boston. Y'all got me super hyped this morning. Don't make me get too loud. Don't make me get too loud. Don't make me get too loud. How's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? So, I, I like I said, Pasadena, Pasadena, Oakland. What's up? All right. So, I, I'm doing these conversations um, every Saturday because what I want to do is I want to get a chance to get for you guys to get to know me. A lot of people uh, know me because, oh, he's a guy that teaches or he's a guy that plays for such and such. Louisiana in the house, Brazil's in the house. But what I want to do is I want to give an opportunity to really get a chance to connect with you guys. Florida's in the house, Virginia Beach. Um, to talk about stuff, you know, like whether it's guitars, whether it's like touring, whether it's like pedals, it's gear, whatever information and knowledge that I have, I definitely want to do this um, with you guys because I know a lot of times um, it's uh, being on the other side of the fence when like you were trying to like, you know, ask you know, people that you looked up to questions and they just didn't either they didn't have the time to do it or they just didn't do it, whatever it was. Philly's in the house. What's up? So I want to um, I want to take this time to start to connect with you guys in a different level because I, I know what it feels like to be on the other side of the fence or whatever and just be like, yo, you're trying to, you know, just you need some information. You need some answers, you know, questions answered. You need this or that or whatever. So Dallas is in the house, whatever. Um, so I wanted to take that time to help you guys out. So bar chords with fingering is hard. Yes, it is. Anytime you're learning a new concept, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be challenging because you're you're asking your body and your brain to do something that it's never done. So it'll take some time. It may be a little challenging in the beginning. That doesn't mean that it's not doable. So don't be so hard on yourself. Take the time and like what I've learned and what I found out in the years that I've been doing is, is if you break it up into small sections, it'll be easier for you to do it. All right, your tutorials, your tutorials help a lot. That's what's up. That's what's up. Any bar chord warm up suggestions? Um, so if you're working on bar chords and you're having like issues and you want to do a warm up, I would practice doing uh in every fret. An example, a cool example, right? If you're just going to do, let's say, a bar chord you're working on, like just a major bar chord, I would do it in every every fret. So you get used to what it feels like underneath your hands because the frets get smaller the more they go down. As you can see, you see how wide the frets are right here. You see they start to get a little bit more narrow. So practice doing a minor. That's one way to do it. That's one way to work on it. Good, good. Let's go back and look at some of these questions because I want to make sure we're helping you. What's good, bro? Your big inspiration. I appreciate that. What song do you recommend when playing R&B? I don't really recommend a song. It's really any song that you hear. Like there's a lot of songs that are out right now versus a lot of songs that were before. It's really whenever I, what I what I'm trying to teach and what I want to convey to like my students or the people that watch me on YouTube is that whenever you hear whatever song that you like, that you know how to grab your guitar and be able to be like, hmm, okay, let me figure out what key it's in. 
okay, these are the chords that they're playing. That's what I want to do. So I don't really recommend like one particular song. It's more so like you being able to hear the song, grab your instrument and play along and play how you feel. All right, that was a good question. I said, I've noticed issues with bar chords, mostly with the first fret. And if you're having problems with the first fret, you may want to check the action of your guitar. When I'm talking about the action, I'm talking about how close your strings. If you see, like the action on this guitar is really, really low. And that's good. That's how I like it. I don't like the strings to be, you know, super far from the neck of the guitar. That makes it hard for me to play. So if you're having issues like that, one, you may want to work on your hand strength, but then also check the action of the guitar. That's something that I would tell you to look at. All right, that was a good question. All right, it says, do you teach theory in your paid lessons? Yes, I teach theory. I'm, I, I teach theory enough to where make you to, to make you dangerous. Now, I'm not going on this whole dissertation about theory because I don't, I feel like that is useless information in your tool bag. I'm always trying to give you the tools that you'll need that are essential for you to use with your tool bag. Now that I have a lot of you guys on here, I'm gonna make this announcement again. But I encourage you, if you're not already subscribed, to subscribe and to be click the notification bell. The reason why I'm saying this, I'm gonna start um, a course this week where I'm just doing lessons at different times of the day. But I'm gonna be doing like little small excerpts where I'm just giving you guys a lot of valuable information. I'm gonna be doing lives. So if you're not subscribed, if you're not already click the subscription bell, you're gonna miss out on these cool live lessons that I'm doing. It's not gonna be a very long, extensive lesson, but it's gonna be like maybe like, you know, 10, 15 minutes where I'm going over a topic and I'm gonna to show you guys. I wanna create um, lessons this week doing YouTube Live. So I, I need you guys, if you guys are not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so you can be notified anytime I'm online and anytime that I'm dropping a new video because I don't want you to miss out. So if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do so because I'm doing a course this week where I'm just gonna go do lives where I'm gonna be talking about various things when it comes to acoustic guitar, when it comes to electric guitar, talking about different R&B tips that I wanna teach you and show you that it's gonna really help you in your playing. All right, let me go back and answer some of these questions. I got some good stuff. Um, facts, never thought about that. Um, what song do you recommend when playing R&B? I think I answered that question. Um, what's up? So I'm a, I'm a beginner in the house. It says, I've been practicing guitar for about six months, self-taught. It says, feels like I'm plateauing. Glad I found this. Great, great. You're my favorite guitarist, hands down. I, I'm humble, truly humbled. Send exercises for typing. <laughs> uh, matter of fact, when I was in keyboard, there was like the home keys. If you rest on the home keys, you take those, those keyboard lessons that show you how to do the stuff. That stuff will get you right for typing says, what would you practice if you only had 20 minutes a day? It depends. Am I practicing for a show? Am I practicing for a gig? Am I just practicing for, for the sake of practicing? If you're going to practice for 20 minutes, find an area that you're weak. If you're weak in this particular area, you want to practice and get better in that area. So if you're weak in chords, you want to practice with chords. If you're weak on scales, practice on scales. If you're weak in riffs, if you're weak con combining all three together, then that's what you want to practice on if you got 20 minutes a day. All right, these are some really good questions. All right. What are your thoughts about John Mayer? I think John Mayer is super talented. Um, he does some stuff that I can't do. Like I can't sing and play. Um, and he's really smart about who the musicians that he has on stage with him in order to enhance his sound. That's really smart. That takes a really smart individual who doesn't have egos to realize, you know what? I, I have this vision, I have this dream that I want, but I want my sound to be so unique, but I gotta get some of the best players and I can't let my ego get in the way and shortchange me of that. So I think that's really smart of John Mayer. Dope. All right, I'm from Brazil, I don't speak English well. Uh, Richard, you're doing great, you're doing great. All right, what a good exercise to build up your speed in your fingers. Um, practice going down each individual finger down the fret. That's what I would say. Set a metronome so you can start super slow. Da, da, da. Then speed up. Da, 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 da. Faster. The more you can do that, the better it will be for you. All right. You guys are giving me some good feedback this morning. What are the difference between free and paid courses you offer? Free is like a sample size. If you guys ever been to Costco, you guys have ever been to the grocery store and they give you like a, a sample size, you'd be like, man, this stuff was good. And it either will make you want to buy the product or be like, ah, it's not for me. That's what the free stuff is. So I give you like a light coat. 
the paid stuff is more in depth. Like you put your hands in it. If you've ever made biscuits, you've ever made fried chicken or anything where you got to get like your hands submerged in it. That's what the paid lessons are. I'm going by the numbers. I'm explaining it more in detail and I'm helping you because what I want to do is give you the insight that I don't give everybody else. All right. Some really good questions. Do you have some sweeping pick, picking in your R&B playing? Or so, what kind of exercise do you do? I really don't do a lot of sweeps when I'm playing. That's just, for R&B, it's not really necessary. It's not really mandatory. So I don't really, the thing that I need you to understand, I'm an army guy, right? Most of you may or may not know. And I used to have to carry this rucksack full of like 150 pounds of weight. And you would have to decide if you're going to carry more like wet weather gear, more equipment, more food or whatever. And I learned that I used to carry unnecessary weight for no reason. I used to be on these missions and we have to walk like six miles, get air inserted at night and be doing all these missions. And I used to carry a whole bunch of weight because I thought it was necessary. After doing it for so long, I was like, you know what? This stuff is not necessary. So what I'm not going to teach my students and applying that same principle is stuff that's not necessary. So if you don't use it in the R&B, you're not really going to see me talk about it. So if I don't talk about it, then it's probably not necessary. I talk about things that are necessary, things that you're going to apply, that you're going to use every single day or every single time that you play. Like So when you come to my page, you come to my channel, if you follow me on Instagram or whatever platform that you follow me on, I want you to know that I'm giving you the stuff that you're going to use. If you dig in your tool bag and you pull it out, it's necessary. It's not useless. I don't want to give you useless information because I don't like useless information. I don't like when people give me useless stuff that wasted like 10 hours of my life for no reason because I'm not going to use it. All right, that was some good stuff. Let's go back. I'm definitely tuning in and I have my guitar. Yes. So let me jump back in. Um, if you're subscribed, if, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell. This week, I'm going to start doing live lessons and I encourage you to have your guitar. I encourage you to take notes because I'm going to drop some serious gems on you guys that are going to help you as guitarists to get better. Um, it's going to start on Monday. So if you go ahead and subscribe now, go ahead and click the notification bell. I'm going to start these lessons on Monday. The thing is, I'm not going to tell you what times because we're all on different time frames. So that's why I said you gotta be, you gotta be subscribed and you gotta click the notification bell so you'll know that, oh, Carrie's live right now. Carrie Too Smooth is live right now. Have your guitars with you. So that way when I'm dropping nuggets and I'm giving you guys nuggets and I'm giving you guys tips, you can apply those principles. That's what it's all about is applying the principles to get better as a guitarist because I wanna give you the tools to be great. Listen, there's so many artists in the world. There's so much music to be had. I wanna make sure that you feel like when you grab that instrument that you're well equipped to do what you do. Like I want you to grab it. I want you to create music. I wanna be able to meet you guys on the road. I wanna come to your concerts one day and be like, yo, hey man, like, you know what I'm saying? You can hit me up and be like, yo man, I'm a huge fan or whatever. And I happen to be in your city or I have to be in your country, whatever it is, and come to your concert and be like, yo, you're killing. And you'll, you know what I'm saying? It's a chance for us to network. I wanna give you that freedom. I know what it feels like. When you play in front of, you've played in front of 10 people, or if you play in front of 150,000, whatever the case may be, just the fact that you get on stage, you get a chance to share your gift. I know what that freedom feels like. I want to give that to you. All right, let's jump back in. We have some good stuff this morning. All right, so if you want to know about double stop movements and uh, pentatonic things, um, you, I, I highly suggest if you're 18 years or younger, ask your parents. But if you're 18 years or older, go to my website, carriescamp.com. I have extensive lessons on double stop movements, on stuff with the pentatonic. I'm telling you, I've got stuff that's going to really help you unlock the fretboard. And my website is carriescamp, K E R R Y S K A M P.com. And I highly suggest that you should become a member. If you really want to learn that stuff, I really put my hands in the earth when it comes to that. Because it's so much valuable information there. I want to make sure that you get it, that you understand it, and that you don't overlook it because you think, like, oh, I got it. The lessons that I teach, I'm telling you, if you really d dive in, it's really going to illuminate some things that either you forgot or some things you didn't know. That's what these lessons are about. They're about really uncovering and giving you some untapped full potential so that way you know how to excel to the greatest level. That's what it's all about, is excelling to the greatest level. Thanks for all your videos and your gospel courses are still open because I'm really interested in signing up. Uh, yeah, the gospel course is still open. It's just its own package. So if you want to learn gospel, I've, I've talked to some of the industries. Um, guitars that play for some of your favorite artists or maybe not some of your favorite artists some people that you didn't even know that you you may like 
I've got lessons with them. I've done master classes with them. So yeah, go ahead and sign up so that you can have access to that. All right. It says, sorry for my name, LOL. It says, but how do you memorize scales, licks, and chords? Because some people like me, it's a lot of information to take in. So if you're going to try to remember scales, licks, and chords, right? So this is what I tell everybody. You see on the neck of the guitar, you have reference dots, right? You have these little benchmarks. Use these dots. These dots are like maps for you, right? They let you know exactly where you are. So if you're trying to learn a scale, you have to learn the patterns, right? So... Like learning that pattern, like really paying attention to like, uh, bum, bum. even if you got to hum it out. And then modulate. Like look at the pattern. The patterns don't change. The notes will change, but the patterns don't change, right? Using these reference dots. I know if I'm going to look at the first three frets, right? All right, there's no dots and there's a dot right here, right? So I'm going to learn the first three notes. I know because I looked at enough things and I've been doing this long enough. So the first fret and that first, that thickest string is going to be F. I'm going to slide a half step up. That's going to be what? F sharp. And I slide a half step up. That's going to be G. So I'm going to learn those first three notes, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm, then I'm going to go learn the octave. The octave is just three strings on the third string. That's the octave, so I already know if that's F, that's F. If I drop down, it's gonna be what? B flat? B, C. That's how you break it down and start to make things more simple for yourself. Use the reference dots. Make it, learn three frets at a time so that way you're not overly complicating things for yourself and then write it down. Write down the notes and then review it. Have somebody like with flashcards be like, okay, first fret, first note and just hold it up and you have to guess exactly what it is that's going to help generate that information because one you're actively thinking about it you're actively trying to remember it that's going to help you now if you're just trying to get a guitar and just randomly go by yourself that's not going to work it's going to be over overkill you're going to have so much information coming at you left and right you're going to be like oh man this is frustrating i, I don't want to do it but break it down dissect it into small various pieces and then you can get it done all right that's a great question Yo, that's awesome. Looking forward to that. Love your videos. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. When's the last time you played at a coffee shop or street corner just for fun? I've never played on the street corner. The last time I played at a coffee shop has been some years ago. But what I've done, I've done a lot of artist showcase. And what that is, is like usually it's like a, it's a smaller venue. It may have like 150 people. But I've done a lot of acoustic gigs like that. So that was probably like, it had to be sometime uh, maybe last year, I would say. Um, but I've recently done like, you know, we're all quarantined. I've done like different quarantine performances with other different artists and collabs. I've done stuff like that. So that could kind of be like a coffee shop kind of setting, but I've never been a street performer. What are some of the biggest artists you've played for? I've played for Jason Derulo. I've played for Two Chains. I've played for Ty Dolla Sign. I've worked and done some stuff with Tori Kelly. Um, done some stuff with Grace Weber, who's dropping a, a, a new EP on the 22nd. Um, Kiana Lede, Michelle Williams from Destiny's Child, Chrisette Michelle. I've done some work with the Black Eyed Peas. I've done a work with a lot of different people. What's your favorite guitar? Right now, my favorite guitar happens to be um, a Fender Strat HSS that I have, and I have it stocked. Um, I put Lambertone pickups in it, so I have two triple shots for the single coils, and for the humbucker, I have a Crema. That happens to be my favorite guitar. It's the best. It, it's, I'm, I'm really finding out that guitar gives me the most character. when I, I feel like it's my energy when I play. I love the way it sounds. I love the tonality of it. It just gives me everything that I'm looking for. The truth you played with and met Ty, crazy black eyed peas, yup. Fender. Favorite strings for your acoustic? I like to play the Diodarios, but I like to play on acoustics, I like to play 11s because they're a little bit thicker and they resonate a lot more. I used to play with 10s, but when I used to listen back to the mix, 
they were a little too thin and didn't really resonate, especially when I'm doing like power chords or just kind of strumming. So if I'm doing like the strum, like it. Like 11s just ring out a little bit better for me. So I like 11s on um, an acoustic guitar. How can I improve my strumming? Um, it's, well, I have courses on that too. So if you're, like I said, I mean, I everything that you're asking me, that you guys are asking me, if you're 18 years or younger, ask your parents. If you're 18 years or older, go to my website, carrieskamp.com. It's K-E-R-O-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. And generally, all of the questions that you have or all the lessons that you're looking for are there. They're Because I've literally tried to go through step by step all of the things that you could ask for. I've had myself ask me questions like, well, what about this? What about that? So I'm, I'm generally trying to get all of the courses that you may potentially ask for. But when it comes to strumming, you want to work on the simultaneous nature of like up, down, up, down. You want to vary it up like down, down, up. Up, down. You want to set a metronome because there's different strum patterns. Everything is not going to be down, down, down. You're going to have down, up, down, down, up. You're going to have various things. But what I would tell you to do is listen to whatever song you're listening to, set a metronome, and really work on the patterns of like, if you're going to do like down, down, up, like down, down, up, down, down, up. You have to you have to be really redundant in when you're doing it in order to work on making sure that your both hands are working simultaneously at the same time. What are your thoughts about Mateus Asado? I think Mateus Asado is super dope. Like he and I, we met um, probably is like four years ago when we both had a gig with Isles of Malta. Of course, he was playing with Tori Kelly. I was playing with Jason Derulo, and he was super cool. And we used to um, we did this thing with Vertex pedals a couple years ago where we had this like game show called Game of Tones, where he and I were on the same uh, episode. Um, we had to guess Jeff Beck tunes. So Mateus is super dope. I love the stuff that he does, his way that he plays. Everybody has their own voice when it comes to guitar. And the thing about it is, the beauty of it is, is when you find your own voice. When you find your voice and you can play like that, then that's the beauty. So Mateus has his own voice, and I think that that's phenomenal. Favorite digital multi-effects board. I like the Boss ME80 and I like the Helix um, pedal. Those are the two that I love. All right. In need of an overdrive distortion pedal, what would you suggest? I suggest the Keeley D&M pedal. I like the Vertex um, dy Dynamic pedal. And then for those that are like, you know, depending on your budget, the Full Tone OCD is a real good pedal too. Are those videos with you on YouTube Plant? Yeah, if you go search... Tori Kelly's, um, it's like her gospel music stuff with like uh, Kurt Franklin. You'll see me performing with her. Uh, you'll see me, if you go look at Kiana Lede's, I believe it's the Vivo Lift series. You'll see me performing with Kiana Lede. You'll see me performing on, if you go to uh, NPR, Small Tiny Desk, you'll see me performing with Lettucey. Um, I don't know if you'll see me performing with Ty Dolla Sign, but if you go look at Jimmy Kimball Live, um, with two chains, I performed with two chains. We did uh, that's a vibe. I performed with uh, who else on TV? Matter of fact, Ty, Ty Dolla Sign and um, and uh, what's it? Trey Songs are in that same video. So yeah, if you go look and look at various things, and yeah, you'll see those on YouTube. Who's your favorite guitarist? I'm my favorite guitarist. <laughs> Can you do a video on how to record on YouTube? Your setup, please, because right now I'm using an iPhone, but the sound isn't there. You could use your iPhone. Before I started buying cameras and having expensive like equipment or whatever, I was using my iPhone. All I did was I got a tripod right now. I had a tripod, I got a ring light, I had lighting or whatever, and I would just set it up in my room and record. So if you're either your amps are too loud or you're not projecting with your voice and you can buy like lapel mics and get the adapter depending on what kind of phone and plug it into your phone so the way you can hear a lot better. Do you have a favorite genre between R&B, 80s rock and gospel? R&B. Best album you listened to lately? Best album I've listened to lately? I've downloaded a lot of albums, but I can't say the best album cuz I like I just like music. Best is like an absolute for me when it comes to music. Music is art, so I can't say that that's the best. You know, I can't give a, a best whatever. It says, 
What points do you think buying an electric guitar is a good move for those learning on an acoustic, but interested in learning? Uh, so at what point? That's a great question. I would say if you feel like you're ready to make that transition, why not? Why not buy something that's inexpensive that you can learn with, that you can grow with? And if you like the way it feels, why, why not buy it? All right. Definitely. Let's go back and look at some of these other questions. You don't like the number 11, don't you? I don't know what that means, Eric. What other instruments do you play? I play bass guitar. I'm not like a killer bass player. Guitar is like my primary instrument, like acoustic and electric. Uh, bass, I can play like in the studio. Now, if we re rehearse, I can do that. Um, but in my in my heart and in my head, I want to be a drummer. Like if I can play any instrument, honestly, I would want to be drums. I love the way drum drummers be just, that's something I've always wanted to do. But I don't play conventional. I don't play like, I play like this. You know what I mean? So like, it's always, I used to get made fun of like when I was a kid. So I stopped playing drums, but like I, in my heart of hearts, I just want to be good enough so I can sound check for somebody. You know, if any of you guys have ever been to sound checks, they'd be like, you know, hit the toms hit the hi-hat, and then they like play the full kit. I just want to be able to go in there and like smash. I just, all I want to do, I don't want to play a show. I just want to be able to sound check. If I can sound check, then I'm good. And I'll be like, I ain't even a drummer. I'm the guitarist. I'm just sound checking. You know what I mean? That's all I want to do. Do you write original? Do you write originals or write songs for other artists? Yes, I've written plenty of songs for other artists. The songs that are coming out for Grace Weber on May 22nd, um, her album is dropping, her EP is dropping. I co-wrote on a lot of those different projects, or produced and co-wrote on a lot of those. So you'll get a chance to see in here. Hi, Carrie, have you ever tried or seen somebody try to sing a secular sounding song, buddy beat pedal for practicing and for small gigs? Let me try to understand. Try a singular sound beat buddy pedal. I've never seen that, so I can't, I'm sorry, Hector, I can't help you out. What are your suggestions for a solid acoustic guitar? This is a Taylor 714 Grand Auditorium. This guitar is probably one of the best guitars that I've ever played. If you're looking for a suggestion for a guitar, I would say this, depending on your budget. Now, if your budget is kind of like whatever, Orangewood makes some really good guitars. Gopherwood makes some really good guitars. I used to be with Gopherwood for a very long time. Um, there are a lot of good guitar companies that just what happens is the quality and what the instruments can do. That's what you have to find yourself asking yourself. It says, I want to be able to play like you so I can play at my wedding for my girl. You know what? You sign up to my courses. I'm telling you, if you sign up to my courses, you're going to be straight. And that's like I said, if you're 18 years or younger, ask your parents. But if you're 18 years or older, go to carriescamp.com. That is K-E-R-R, two R's, K-E-R-R-Y-S. KAMP.com. And I promise you, the courses will get you straight so you can play for your girl at, at your wedding. How did your career start? What was your big break? Uh, my career started when a friend of mine years ago, it was probably, probably 11 years ago, gave me a phone call and said, like, yo, um, actually, it started before that. Let's, let's, when I got out of the Army in, in 2007, I started doing a whole bunch of like Chitlin Circuit kind of gigs around Alabama and around the South. Um, getting my feet wet. My first big break in the industry was probably like 10 years ago. A friend of mine called me and asked me, do you want to play on the BET Awards? I said, for sure, I definitely want to do that. He's like, you just got to get yourself here to LA, which was here was LA. So I go to LA, I'm in Soundcheck, I'm playing, and people are like around like, oh my God, yo, where are you from? And I'm like, I'm from Alabama. They're like, if you ever move to LA, you'll never stop working. So I went back to Birmingham. I, that kept resonating with me. I saved my money for a year. Then I moved out here to LA. Now, when I moved out to LA, it took me about six months. I was doing all of the gigs, all of the coffee shop gigs, all of the, you know, crappy gigs nobody wanted to do, all the church gigs or whatever. Actually, when I first got my, my next big call, I was at a small Baptist church playing bass and the drummer was the MD for Tyrese, which I didn't even know. I was just cool. I was just one the thing that I had to let people know is you just gotta be a cool person. If you're just a crappy person with that horrible attitude, People are not going to want to work with you. And the guy had never seen me play, you know, guitar ever and asked me like, yo, what are you doing next Thursday? And I was like, yo, I'm not doing nothing. He's like, you want to go to St. Kitts? 
And mind you, I don't even know, I didn't know at the time where St. Kitts was. I had never heard of it. And I was like, yeah, sure. You know what I mean? Like, psh, I ain't doing nothing. And he was like, yeah, you want to play guitar for Tyrese? And I was like, stop, bro. Stop playing with me. He was like, no, 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 for real. Like, we need a guitar player. Tyrese needs a guitar player. And like, yo, I heard mad things about you. He was like, rehearsal is such and such day. It's going to be like 14 hours. But like, you know, cool, whatever. You got a passport? I was like, yeah, I got a passport. Came to rehearsal, learn all the songs. Next thing I know, I'm in St. Kitts with Tyrese on stage. He's the headliner. That was like my first real, real break into the industry where I had to buy like the right kind of gear, get the right kind of in-ears, get a pedal board, get everything set up. You know what I mean? And then from there, stuff started happening. I started getting calls to do TV gigs, started doing like, I was on TV, I was doing a whole bunch of different gigs with different artists. So it all started opening up for me. You know what I mean? What's necessary? So what do you think is necessary in about picks? It says... What do you think about picks? Are they necessary? Yes, when you're playing electric guitar, picks are definitely necessary. You're playing acoustic, I don't feel like they're definitely necessary because when I was playing before and I was strumming, I was using my hands, but it's uh, it's tonal. You gotta hear like the tonal qualities, right? So when I'm playing with the pick, I, for acoustic guitars, I always use a metal pick. That's my vibe, I use a metal pick because I just like the way, the way it rings out. So you hear that? That's with a pick, with a, my hand. Like the tonal quality changes or whatever. So you just have to ask yourself, you know, like what kind of sound that you want when it comes to acoustic. Now electric, I, hands down, I say you got to have a pick. You don't need it the whole show depending on certain kind of songs, but you definitely need, need a pick. Uh, what do you think about the new PRS 2020 SE lineup? I've never used them, so I can't, I can't give any kind of feedback on it. I've never played them, so I, I don't know. I don't know what they sound like or what they feel like. Definitely going to your camp. Clarence, what's up? Definitely. Uh, talking about using 11s on acoustic and you love those minor 11s. <laughs> Got you. All right, cool. Let's go back and let's look at some other questions. I don't want to make sure I miss anything. Do, 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 do. Facts. Thanks for the lessons, Carrie. They're really helping out. Thanks. That's what's awesome. I'd like to know about your thumb action. Thumb action on what? Like if I'm using it on a guitar? Like with my strum hand or my chord hand? Like I don't know, Leon, what that is. All right. Let's see. Okay. Does the kind of amp you have matter for r and I think it does. I'm not using a Mesa Boogie Rectifier, which is like more of a pop kind of amp for me or, or Marshall Half Stack. I'm not using those. I'm using something more or less like when I'm on tour, I like to use a Bad Cat Lynx or I like to use Mesa Boogie Long Stars or I like to use like Fender DeVille's. I think like that's more of an R&B type of amp. So yes, the amp does definitely does matter. Is there a trick playing behind someone word for word in a song like Jabari does behind Karen Clark? Let me know. Uh, I haven't heard what Jabari did behind Karen Clark, but when you're doing like a call or response, or that's scripted out, so that's a rehearsed thing. It's not just you getting up there and kind of vibing, um, unless it's like a moment in time on stage. You can kind of feel when it's a moment, but nine times out of 10, like you're rehearsing something that's really scripted especially when you're playing with the artist of that magnitude. Um, but there's a trick when playing behind an artist. You have to be delicate and listen to hear exactly what's going on with their singing. You don't wanna, it's not a competition. You're not trying to one up them. So you just have to be very careful and listen and have a respect when you're on stage and you're performing. And realize it's not your show. It's, it's the artist, whoever you're performing with show. says, when do I know I mastered the number system? When I can call out a key and give you progression in numbers that you can play it? You don't have to think about it. You could just play it. That's when you know you mastered the number system. How do you feel about nylon strings? I don't necessarily, Carlos, I really don't care for nylon strings. I love the way when other people play it, it sounds. But me personally, when I play, I don't, I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it.
All right, going through. I'm trying to make sure I answer all these questions. I don't want to leave anything out. As a beginner starting brand new, would you suggest starting out on acoustic or electric? I would say get an acoustic guitar because what you don't want to do is get a whole bunch of equipment when you're first learning how to play. And an acoustic guitar can go anywhere with you. You can practice it and you can play it anywhere. So I would say get an acoustic guitar. I'm learning with you and I'm taking and I'm talking about behind the neck doing scales and chords. All right, so thumb placement is really important, right? So if I'm playing certain chords, right? If I'm playing like a major seven, right? My thumb, uh, this is so weird, but I'll try to do it. My thumb is like this. I'm doing like a major seven right here, so my thumb has to be on top. I'm doing a minor. Every time that I play, I want to like have a, a U shape or in my hand where the guitar just kind of rests in there, right? And when I'm playing and I'm I'm not pushing crazily hard, I'm it's more of like I'm it's like a firm but yet gentle handshake, right? So I'm playing. Like it's just, I'm just keeping that U-shape the whole time that I'm playing. That's what I'm doing. What in-ears do you recommend for live shows? So I'm personally endorsed with Empire. I highly suggest Empire. I tell people all the time, Empire ears are probably some of the best because they have a lot of drivers and just the dynamic thing that they can do with them. I used to be with JH Audio. I've heard a lot of guys talk about 1964. I've heard a lot of guys talk about Ultimate Ears. And then for those that are like a little bit more cost effective, Me Audio has some really cool stuff that I would suggest. I would suggest getting those before you go to Guitar Center and get the Shures. I don't like the Shures, but I, there's some people that like them. I'm just personal preference, I don't like the Shures. How do you visualize a fretboard? Easy. I use the dots, the dots of my benchmarks, right? So I know certain notes are on certain benchmarks, right? So I know if I go to the second dot, right? I know that's A on the first string, that's A, right? So depending on if I'm playing an A minor, I know the next dot is going to be what? B minor. And I know right on the neck, on the second string, that's gonna be E minor. So I'm able to see because I'm using the dots as reference marks, as little benchmarks for me to navigate around the neck of the guitar. It's super important when you start to play, don't just play and just forget everything else you're doing. Visualize and pay attention to what's going on so you can make sure like, oh, my hands are right here, that's that note. Oh, my hands are right here, that's that note. And understanding, there's a couple of different things that you gotta understand. So knowing where the notes are and using the reference dots, but two, understanding that major chords and minor chords have the same kind of pattern and shape, right? So for an example, the same shape would be like if I'm playing a major seven shape, right? A minor seven shape. So if I'm playing, if I, they say I got to do a C major, right? But I got to go all the way and do an E major. It's the same. If I go to C minor, the shapes don't change. E minor. The shapes don't change. Just the notes change. So just understanding like the notes. I'm using on the sixth string, so that's a G minor. G major, going to A, A minor, A major. So the shapes don't change, the notes change. So just understanding that, that's half the battle right there. And then using the reference dots to navigate around the neck of the guitar. Then you start to get in and open up more Pandora's, Pandora's box by realizing, okay, now I need to learn where all of the C's, C chords are on the neck of the guitar. Where all of the such and such and such and such, that's when you start to unlock a different kind of spectrum to where you can talk about voicings that's a whole nother level but you don't want to like oversaturate yourself all right um i want to go ahead and remind those people if you're not already subscribed to my channel go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell this week i'm going to be doing a live series here on youtube live and i'm not i don't know what time i'm going to be doing different kind of videos but if you're clicking the the notification bell and you subscribe you'll be notified when i jump on have your guitar 
Take some notes because I'm dropping some serious gems that are going to help you really unlock your full potential how to play guitar, right? I'm going to be talking about some R&B kind of chord licks. I'm going to be talking about some chord progressions. I'm going to talk about various things that I feel, just like some tidbits. I'm not going in like a whole dissertation for an hour. This may be like a 10 minute, 15 minute kind of class where I'm just like, yo, dropping a nugget. This is how you play this. This is how you do this. You should practice this. You should do this. And I don't want you to miss out. So go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and click the notification bell so you can be notified whenever I jump on because I don't know which times that I'm jumping on because they're all they're going to vary depending on life and schedule or whatever. But I'm doing it this week, so I want to make sure that you guys are on board. Also, if you're looking to try to go even deeper, if you're 18 years or younger, ask your parents. But if you're older than 18, go to my website, carriescamp.com. That is K-E-R-R-Y-K-A-M-P.com to really like take your plane to the next level and unlock your full potential. Um, I'll be taking a few questions um, when I start to do these lives, but the main point is just to give you information. I'm not trying to, it's not like a like like this is, like on Saturday where we just sit and we just chat, we kind of go back and forth. When I do these lives, I'm, I'm really just showing you information like, oh, this is a cool progression. I think you guys should like work on this if you want to work on this aspect. So, have you ever video clipped from your, have you video clips from your music? Yes, I have some video clips from my music. So if you go on uh, YouTube and you type in Puppy Love by Carrie Too Smooth, you should definitely see it. I think Cindy Sear is on there as well. I don't know about any other stuff. It might be on there, I, don't, I can't remember. All right, let's go back and look at a few more questions. It says, how do you know when you're ready for the blues jam or indie jams in public? What should you be able to do? What should you be able to know? All right, so blues jams, I don't know because I don't really play blues. But I feel like if you ever feel like you're comfortable, like if you're comfortable, because that's a personal question. I can't tell you like, you know, you're ready and you feel like you're not ready. It's a personal question. If you feel like you have a strong ear you have a good grasp of how to like play music in general. Like if you know, not if you know every blues song, but if you know enough blues songs that you feel comfortable, if, if like we're playing like a blues shuffle in like in B flat, could you play it? If I, if I modulate and I go to like C sharp, could you do it? Like those are the things you gotta ask yourself, can you feel comfortable with? Are, do you get intimidated by other players on stage or are you confident in your own abilities? That's how you know that you're well. So it's how do you dominate, sponsor your channel? I don't know what that is, what that means, so I'm not sure. What is the best advice you can give on how to have a new level of R&B guitar? Since what's the best advice you can give on how to have a new level on R&B guitar? The best advice I could give is if you're if you're asking that question, you should probably go to my website, carriescamp.com, k e r r y s k a m p dot com, and sign up. And let me equip you with the tools so that way that you'll know that you're at the next level, that you can play and feel confident. Who is your biggest influence? Um, my biggest influence? Um, Jubu Smith, Eric Walls, Tim Stewart are probably some of my biggest foundational. Spanky Alfred are some of my biggest foundational influences. Okay, not a guitar question. Cool beard. <laughs> Do you use any products in it? Um, I used to, but right? Honestly, right now with the quarantine, man, I'm not really trying to get out there in the streets like that. So definitely not trying to do that. All right, I'm going to take a few more questions and then um, I'm going to sign out. How do you play all over the fretboard? So the first thing that you got to understand is if you want to play all over the fretboard is you got to know where the notes are. And what I mean by that, you don't have to know where every actual individual note is. You just got to know where your bass notes are, right? So what I mean by that is like your first two strings, you got to know. Because like I said before, one, one of the ways that I teach when I'm teaching my students is to understand that the patterns do not change, but the notes change, right? So if I know if I need to play an F, if I'm going to play like an F major chord, I need to go down here and know the F is down here. Know the F is right here. So knowing where F is at various different spots, F sharp, 
Same thing. You got to start to learn where everything is. And once you start to learn where everything is, then you're able to kind of like flow up and down the neck of the guitar. Then it's about starting to see like different kind of highlights. You have like a, a moments where you can see where different pivot points are. Like if I'm playing like a minor run, right? I'm playing a D minor run. So I'm going to use my, my middle finger. And I'm doing that, but understanding those are the same notes that fall into that A minor pentatonic. Like starting to see how like, oh, these are all connected. I can use those two different like movements, but it connected with that same pentatonic movement. Understanding how to break those things down. That's how also you're gonna be able to start to connect and play all over the neck of the guitar by simplifying a lot of different things and not overcomplicating it. That's how you're gonna be able to do it. What's the next step after mastering bar chords? The next step, mastering scales, I would say. Like, cause you gotta use it all together. Like you can play bar chords all the day, but can you do riffs? Can you play riffs effectively in between your chords? Can you connect the fluidity of you doing bar chords? That's what you got to work on. It's just carry too smooth. How do you define yourself with a fat guitar sound? How do you define yourself what a fat guitar sound is? Um, that it's not too high. There's not a lot of mids and there's no bass. You got to warm it up a little bit. So that means you got to massage your tone in order to get that fat warm sound. And you can't play like thin chords like you can't play thin chords right so to me a, a thin chord is like an open c that's a thin chord if i'm playing out i'm not gonna be able to do a thin chord especially when i'm doing r&b i should be doing like a major seven it's a fatter chord it's a thicker it's a warmer chord all right let's see that does carrie's camp have a monthly subscription option no it does not it does not all right, let's go look at this. Uh, it says, when you were young, how did you copy Jubal's playing, Eric Wall's plays, and some of your other... So I would listen to various techniques, right? So I'm Jubal, I remember watching his video when he played uh, with the Soul Seekers. And just his, like, his command of the instrument, um, what would you do? And that particular song, I was like, cool. Loved it, so I started working on that. Once I found out that he played um, a lot of those records, those Tony, Tony, Tony records, I started to realize that, oh, that was Jubu. Anniversary, that was Jubu. Like, so like these are songs that I like, so I started to try to mimic and try to practice what he was doing. Same with Wall, same with Tim Stewart, same with everybody else that I, I suggested. Any tips for live shows? Yeah, play exactly what you rehearse. Don't get on stage and try to do some extra stuff because you're feeling it. That's not the time that you want to get out there because it's just not the time because you practice how you're going to play it. If you don't practice it how you how you did it, if you're not going to play it live, if you didn't practice it, don't do it. It's just a, it's a disaster. It's going to set you up to fail. It's going to be horrible. So don't do that. What's my sign? I am a Virgo. Hey, Carrie, please. Does Carrie's Camp accept monthly payment? No, it does not. We don't do monthly payment. How do you rate Eric Gales on your list of favorite players? Eric Gales, which I, who I've met and I'm, I'm a huge fan of, Eric Gales is a phenomenal player, but you have to understand we play uh, different genres, we play different styles. So like, but I think what he does is unique in a, and it's on a whole nother level. I like when Eric taps in, right? When Eric Gales taps in, you know you're about to go on a huge, amazing ride. But we play differently. So I can respect some of the stuff that he does, some of his solos and like how he does like his different kind of scales. But that's not really my vibe. I love some of his chord voicings now because he's a left-handed guy in the way that he plays. His voicings are just so unique. I like the warmth of his chords. And I like how he uses the tremolo bar when he's doing various things. But like the thing about guitar is you can get literally give this instrument to 12 different people and it can sound 12 different ways. But you can appreciate that. And that's one of the things I've learned as a being a guitar player. I've, I've learned how to appreciate what other people are offering and bring to the table. Eric Wall thumb pick is crazy. Yeah, definitely. Have you ever played with a thumb pick? I've tried. After watching Eric Walls, I tried. Like, I ain't gonna lie. I tried when I moved out here to LA. Like, it just, it's not my thing. It just does not work. 
but I tried. <laughs> what artists do you like nowadays? Uh, the artists that I work with. That's the artists that I like, you know what I'm saying? Honestly, the artists that I work for and work with and produce, those are the artists that I like nowadays. All right. Um, quick reminder, if you're not already subscribed to my channel and click the notification bell, you're going to miss out. I'm doing these lives where I'm dropping some nuggets this week and I'm going to be teaching, giving you guys some insight. So I don't want you to miss out. So go and subscribe. If you're not already subscribed, click the notification bell. Also, if you're looking to try to go deeper, if you're 18 years or younger, ask your parents before you go to my website. But if you're older than 18, go to my website, carriescamp.com. That is K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. So that way you can learn how to unlock this guitar in your full potential because I want you to play to your full potential. All right, I'll see you guys on Monday. Make sure you guys click and subscribe because I don't want you to miss out because if you miss out, I don't know what to tell you. All right, peace.